Viewers, welcome back this morning to the Tobago Updates Morning Show. We should have on the line at this time with us Nikosi Phillips, the political leader of the Unity of the People. Uh, the conversation this morning is on the voice note gate, vacate office now. Good morning and welcome to you, Nikosi Phillips. Good morning, good morning, Tobago morning, Trinidad by extension. Good morning, beautiful Ria and Tobago Updates. Good morning. Good morning. Always good to chat with you. Always good to chat with you. Uh, let, let's, let's talk this morning here. Now, uh, Nikosi, it's been three weeks since we have seen uh, the surfacing of these voice notes, what they're now calling voice note gate, uh, because there are investigations into, as they investigate, as they investigate um, these voice notes, these alleged voice notes of uh, re sounding, I have to say, sounding like um, the voices of the uh, Chief Secretary and the Secretary for Education, Chief Farley Augustine and Assemblyman Zurisha Hackett. Um, what are your thoughts on the fact that to date, three weeks later, we still have not heard a peep from, um, from either of the two parties involved? Um, the thought remains the same, that um, if you do not, it, it's, it's, it's something like the past. We've seen We've asked questions allegations. There were allegations made to his secretary and his administration from construction to his personal information. Kisa Jackson making allegations. We've seen Mr. Duke make allegations against him, and then he comes out a few days after his silence and talking about legal actions. We have not heard those any updates to those legal actions. We haven't heard anything yet on the when the lot of in fiasco with um the, the money is being sent to the U.S. We haven't heard any updates or anything. So for me, it's, it comes as you are sitting in a seat and you feel like you have the ultimate power and then disrespecting the media, saying that the media control or dictate his space. Then if the media boycotts all his issues and all his things, who will then be subject to give information to the public? The media is like the people of Tobago. The media speaks for the people of Tobago at one point in time because if we don't, all of us can't go to every meeting that they have, we depend on the media to get information. And for you, Island, for so long, hiding or wherever you've been, the media, or the media doesn't dictate your pace and then people go on clapping. And, you know, the, the, if, if the table has turned and it was some other political party done that, they were already court of justice. And as I've said, we have written to the integrity commission and the letter was sent to I think on Monday. I don't know if the integrity commission has received it as yet. And the only one to the commissioner, I don't know if they have received it, but we have written our letter expressing an investigation should be launched in the conduct of the two persons involved in the alleged um, leak of the video, the audio. So we are waiting for a response and as I said, that, that's the only direction it has to go. Apart from the, the length of time that it's taking, what are your thoughts on the, on the, the voice notes as a whole? Um, how do you view it? Is it, is it a breach of um, uh, public practice? Is it a breach of integrity? How do you see this? It's a, it's a corruption in public office. It's a integrity in public office. We also have to look at the cyberbullying laws. I um, mean, the cyberbullying laws, it speaks about persons um, going to social media to harm, threaten, damage, kill, or in, insert some sort of violence, and also to harm others or to pay harm, pay harm to others. And if you look at that law, they would have also broken that criminal law as well, because propaganda, everybody knows propaganda is to persons. And this goes to think, maybe all those threats I've been getting you, I, I now have to open my mind to say, okay, good, those threats that I've been getting with those fake profiles and all these people sending all these comments and stuff towards me, I could be a part of that propaganda or be a, a victim to that propaganda. So it goes to show that um, no one is safe. Because if you're sitting in high office and that is the criminal conduct that you're behaving in, when you took that oath to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, especially Tobago, some things like that. This I, I honestly I would really want to hear what is his response because anything coming from him now and saying that is not me, 
Well, I had to give up. Honestly, I will have to give up because I we, we literally what we did we give some children the voice note and said who who is this child who is this in this in this thing that's the chief secretary that chief secretary if the little children could hear your voice and pick pinpoint you for you to come now and say he's not use Michael Jackson or Tina Turner well I had to give up on politics honestly. All right, what you I want to get your thoughts very quickly here on. I want to get your thoughts very quickly here on the, um, the issue of some who are saying that propaganda the world over political parties, uh, election campaigns, they use this tactic the world over, and it's nothing new. Um, what are your thoughts on that? And, and you know, in, in other words, what's the big deal about this? Babies, you are using state funds. You said it, it's very clear. Okay, we can have out of the 30 we just need about seven to create profile to create propaganda the word propaganda we all know any it is they're saying it because if they know some are supporting their party still are supporting it propaganda is to smear or to bring down or to or to talk bad or to do ill will against somebody we all know the word propaganda is a yes it's a political tool or tactic but at the end of the day this is an official when you give yourself to office, you give yourself, you, um, you sign an integrity, you, uh, integrity in Public Life Act. If you were somebody normal, sure, but you are now a political figure. And for you to be sitting to plot and deploy, it's totally different. You, you are, you, you, it was very clear in the step using THA funds, hire them eight or four. We don't have to pay them. It was there, it is clear. So, you, not even the word propaganda, but you sitting, plotting, and inciting the use of propaganda by creating full, full fake profiles and using THA funds to do so, it's a clear indication of your misconduct in public office and in your, your, your breaching in cyberbullying laws because you are inciting or hiring or paying a person to spread propaganda or to tear somebody apart on social media. So it is nothing clear of all the word propaganda or what word propaganda the thing is you are inciting something it is coming like telling me let me pay this person to go kill that person but we're going to hire them from the THA so they will get that either you are inciting something so it, it, any common sense person or person with common sense would know what propaganda means and anybody who say oh they don't understand it's a political tool well something has to be wrong with us in Tobago and as I said if it was on the other hat they would have said something different we 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 to listen to Bacon needs to wake up. We are in a limbo right now and we need to get this thing all together. We need to get it properly. Okay, now we heard uh the minority leader uh Calvin Morris yesterday speaking to um let them vacate. They must leave vacate they must vacate office now. We heard the political leader of the PDP, Mr. Watson Duke, a uh, couple just a few days ago saying uh reiterating the same thing. Uh, they, they need to leave office. They need to get out of office. They need to demit office. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Is this enough to, for a call, uh, for a call uh, to, or to call on them to demit office? It is more than enough because we're seeing the limbo with the chief administrator. We are seeing they, they're still breaching our EMA laws. We're seeing a lot of things not happening. We're seeing the fight with central government and, and the THA. This, is, it, this, this alone is an actual cause to the additional misconduct in public office and all these things that they're doing to call election. Listen, we need to get this thing right. And if an election is called and the people then decide who or what, or what a team or whoever they want to put there, at least the people would have spoken again because these people spoke for the PDP. They elected downright 14 to 1 in the PDP in favor of the PDP, not the, these independents or whatever they call themselves. They did not elect that. They did not choose and they did not vote for that. So therefore, with all fairity, there must, we must go back to the polls and let the people speak. Let Tobago have a sense of calmness because there is no calmness, there is no relationship with central government and they are damaging the relationship because of the arrogance and the way how they speak. I just, I think I heard the Prime Minister, the Illustrator, no, it, it's, 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 it's too much, you know, mis, 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 misinformation in public. So the call for the, I understand it, is opposition. I'm sure we call and use this as a, you know, a tactic to 
have them call an election, yes. But with the facts surrounding all the allegations, with the facts surrounding everything at hand, the only thing is left is to call an election. And let the people of Trinidad and Tobago, especially Tobago, be at ease, seeing that we're going back into election, then if they are strong enough, and as I said this, if he feels he is good, if he feels that his party or his people around him, which are the same ones who put out this voice note, if they are strong enough to go back into the election and win, call the election and let the people vote, and then we see if you're really up to the standard of being a man or have the testicular fortitude to call an election. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much there, Nikos, for chatting with us this morning. Nikosi Philip, a political leader of the Unity of the People. And you heard viewers what Nikosi had to say on that issue. Again, thank you so much for, for chatting with us. Viewers, lots more coming up this morning on the Tobago Updates morning show. Uh, when we come back this morning, we, we will be chatting about the new visa-free travel to Canada and what you need to do or what you need to know. And Calicia Letlow uh, Perone, Perone is going to be joining us. And Calicia is an immigration lawyer attached to KYL Law Firm. Share the live, share the live, share the live.